Well, hello, and <laughs> hello, everybody, yes. Welcome to the workshop. What are we talking about today? We're talking about tyres, and I'm going to, right, warning, bad language, I'm, I'm going to swear now. We are talking about fucking tubeless tyres, right? I am sick to the back teeth of tubeless tyres, and let me tell you for why. Now, you will know, as regular viewers, my channel will know, I not long ago bought a Fairlight Seacan gravel bike, very nice bike, separate video about it. Anyway, the tyres that were on it were Panaracer Gravel King 38mm SK, and they are gravel tyres, the clue is in the name. I know they're not supposed to be puncture-proof, but you do kind of think that if you're travelling on gravel, you're travel gravelling, gravel travelling, uh, you're going to be less prone to punctures and maybe some people aren't and may maybe some people are less prone and maybe I'm just accident prone. Anyway, if you watch one of my recent videos, you will see that I went for a gravel ride, very enjoyable gravel ride, only I had a puncture. Well, I thought, well, these things happen. And now these tyres weren't set up tubeless. I uh, had a tube in them, so I took the tyre off, fixed the tube, finished my ride, came home. Well, so far, so good. Good. But then I thought, if they were tubeless, perhaps things would have been better and I wouldn't have had what I thought was a pinch puncture. So I took the wheel out of the bike and I took the tyre off and I removed the inner tube and I managed to seat the tyre on the wheel. Here's the wheel here. The wheel is probably not germane to this particular story, but this happens to be the wheel. It's a 205, it's a Hope wheel. Quite a nice wheel, but anyway, that is not the key part of the story. So, managed to seat the tyre on the rim using a CO2 uh, gas canister inflator. Previously tried it with a, a kind of pump with a special air tank, but for some reason that hasn't been working very uh, properly. So, did it with the gas canister and it seated. Whoa, I thought, well, I'm cooking with gas here, cooking with CO2 gas even. And I thought, oh, this is going well. And um, then I, I heard a, a little bit of a hiss, not a great deal of hiss. I thought, OK, well, not surprisingly, I had a little bit of a puncture. So there's a little hole in the tyre. I know, put some sealant on and the sealant will do its job and it will seal the hole. Well, put the sealant in, pump the tyre up and whoosh, an absolute ejaculation of uh, sealant all over my workshop and all over me to rather uh, disgusting sight it was. So I thought I'll have a look at the tyres. I inspected the tyre and there seemed to be quite a, well I suppose it was about a centimetre wide, about a centimetre wide, about a centimetre uh, gash in the tyres. So I thought I know, well that's not very good, but, but guys, I have these anchovies. You may have heard of anchovies. These are the magic solution. If you have a, a big gash in your tubeless tyre, you take this this insertion tool here. don't know if you can see that. And you take one of these uh, black kind of rubbery things which are here. They're sometimes known as anchovies. They're sometimes known as uh, bacon strips. Um, bacon strips, in my experience, are not black unless they've been out of the fridge quite a long time. Anyway, these are the same kind of things. They're kind of rubber sort of compound and you fit it into your insertion tool here and you insert it into your tyre like that. You pull the uh, insertion, the desertion tool out and the rubber uh, bung uh, fills your hole. Job done. Well, job done not. I could not get this bloody thing into the hole and I'm I'm going like I'm, I'm stabbing the bloody tire like that with my insertion tool and I'm of course I'm making the hole bigger and bigger and I thought well that doesn't matter because that's what the the rubber anchovy is designed to do and I'm forcing it and I could not get it into the bloody hole I managed to get I'd get the insertion tool in but when I pull the insertion tool out the, the rubber bung is still attached to the hole it's not in the tire at all and I spent I don't know about 40 minutes doing this and I thought I'll give up I'll fucking give up right I've got a 
38 mil Gravel King. Now I've, got, I've done two, two gravel rides, two gravel rides, count them, of which uh, there's about 15 miles worth of gravel. So I've done 15 miles on a Panaracer SK Gravel King 38 millimeter tire and it's got a fucking hole in it. So I contacted my mate Michael in the old Portland Cycling Club and he said, well, if that doesn't work, you can seal it with a normal patch. So I've done that. I don't normally patch in the tubes and bugger me, I don't normally patch tyres either. So anyway, I put this patch on. But then I think, well, do I really want to ride on a gravel route? I'm just trying to find the, just trying to see the hole here for you. The trouble is, it, it's quite a big hole in the tyre, but it's not something you're going to be able to see, even if I hold it up really close to, to if I hold it up really close to my eye, because this camera focuses on my eye. I, I still think you can't see it. So anyway, do I want to put this tyre back on the bike, uh, tubeless, pump it up hard, go for a gravel ride with just that little patch on it? And I think, well, no, actually, I'm, I'm not sure that I do. So... They are uh, those those tires came with the bike, so well, yeah, they were a cost, yeah, I, I paid for them and, and they're not working properly. So, I've ordered a different gravel tire, which is an IRC Boken, it's called, and I have referred, in fact, I did an unboxing of some IRC tires, uh, which are 28 mil tubeless tires, which I put on my giant bike, and I've, I've been very pleased with them so far not had a puncture on them so far. So they also do a gravel tire, so I thought, well, I'll get one of those, I'll put that on, and I'll see if that works. Anyway, I did the same thing to the front tire. I thought, oh, well, I know, I'll make the front tire tubeless as well, put the tube out, put the tire on, reseated it first time with a CO2 gas canister, so that worked great, pumped it up, and, uh, yep, that held, so put in the sealant, yep, oh, we're cooking with gas, we're cooking with CO2 gas, so uh, went to bed, got up this morning, came down, looked at the tire, and it was flat. So I thought, oh, for God's sake, why is it flat? If there is a little hole in it, which there could well have been, after all, I was riding on gravel, and who would have thought? in a month of Sundays that a gravel tyre would get a little hole in it. Anyway, you put, you get a, a little hole in it, the sealant is supposed to seal it. So I pumped the tyre up this morning. I'm just, you can't see this because the camera's not pointing there. But I have to be just pointing at my tyre. And at the moment, the tyre is inflated to 60 PSI. And it's been like that for about six hours or so. So we'll have to see if that holds. But, but, I'm really getting frustrated with tubeless tyres. And the, the annoying thing about it is sometimes they work and when they work, I think that they're great. I think they're really good. You go for a ride, you don't get a puncture, it's a, it's a nice, uh, uh, comfortable ride, etc, etc. And then something goes wrong, you get a puncture and you can't fix it or there's a problem fixing it or you, you just can't seat it on the rim and you think, oh, this bloody faff, is it really worth it? And having gone through the expense and trouble of getting into gravel cycling and I really want to do gravel cycling but if I'm going to go gravel cycling I'm going to get punctured all the time I'm just going to say I sod this right and then right the bit where I wasn't riding on the gravel I was riding on the road yesterday riding on the road minding my own business and a, a guy kind of winds down his window and says you're riding too close to the middle of the road would you like to pull over and I, I was like the, the fuck is this? Since when? Right? And uh, oh, it's always been going on. I mean, it started probably with the penny farthing. People would lean out of their horse carriages and say, Excuse me, my good man, would you mind riding your ordinary bicycle in the fucking gutter so us people on horses can have the whole road? It's always been going on. But, I mean, I get, you get advice, right? Car drivers now, all of a sudden, they're like, they're all Jeremy Clarkson. They're giving advice. To cyclists about the best way to cycle on the road. I don't give drivers advice. I don't stop people on the middle of the road and says, excuse me, if you're thinking of turning right, you might just want to indicate occasionally, or if you're driving a fucking BMW, you might occasionally decide to slow down and not overtake 20 yards before you're going to take a left-hand turning. I mean, I don't stop truck drivers and say, by the way, when you're going through a, a puddle, would you kind of avoid splashing me with water all over that? I mean, I don't do that. I don't give people advice. Why do people choose? Why do people think they have to give me advice about how I should cycle on the road? I don't fucking need it. I know what I'm doing, right? So I'm um, 
fed up with cycling. I'm fed up with gravel riding. I'm going to go back on Zwift. I'm not going to ride on the road anymore. I've had it. See you next time.